What's happening, y'all? Coach Holloway back with you again. I got my son Jordan with me this time. So today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, Matt Ryan uh, with the Colts and uh, breaking down uh, the issues that they've been having ever since their season got started. So I break it down into three different things. You have the protection. You have the weapons at his disposal or lack thereof. And then you have the man himself. All right. So there are three different factors I say that uh, – have caused the Colts to struggle to start out the gates right quick. So we'll look at this video, and we're going to uh, break it down for you. So most of the issues I've seen with the pass protection for them comes from really the tackles on both sides, Braden Smith and uh, Matt Pryor. So here on this play, you see Kansas City showing a pressure to the offensive right, and Matt correctly calls a slide protection to the right, and watch how it's executed. Matt Pryor, the left tackle, immediately gets beat by an inside move, which forces Matt. And the right tackle, Braden Smith, he actually does a decent job to stay in the way, but he doesn't hold long enough, and his guy ends up making the sack and getting the fumble. Now this play, they're going against an unorthodox front. So they got um, a D tackle and a 2-I. They got uh, another one in a 5, and then they got two nines with a linebacker over there in a, what looked like a 7. They actually picked this up pretty well, but as you'll see, you have another case of a man just getting beat. Check out Braden over there in right tackle, getting beat again just on a straight bull rush this time. Just gets uh, right into Matt's arm, another sack fumble. So for this Broncos game that everybody is familiar with by now, uh, they did a lot of reshuffling on the line. So they moved Braden and Matt over to the right side and they moved Braden back to his natural guard position. I forgot to mention, Braden is a rookie who's a natural guard who was moved to tackle due to personnel issues. So, yeah, it's a personnel change, but the result's still the same, as you can see. And right here, they make an interesting decision on the right of your screen to have a tight end and running back to chip on Bradley Chubb, and as you can see, it didn't work out for him. Another sack fumble. So a lot of them turnovers you see and Matt have is a lot of this going on. The protection issues have caused Matt to do a lot of improvising on his own, an underrated trait he has that a lot of people outside of Atlanta don't know about. Now, this can be good in a sense, but it can also be bad, especially when you're talking about a 37-year-old quarterback. And if you got deja vu, then that's right, because you got the same lineman making the same mistakes almost every time. There's so many plays, I can only put a few on this clip, but uh, there, it's a lot of them, trust. If you look at the top of the screen, which I think is Alec Pierce, you're going to see that on this one, on a scramble, he also missed a potentially big play. He ran a good uh, stutter, uh, stop and go route. He got in a position to be free to make a big play, but uh, Matt didn't see it because he was scrambling from the pressure. This is a trend that we're going to see some more when we get to Matt Ryan's personal portion of this video. Now, I wouldn't say necessarily a quarterback is as good as his weapons, meaning his receivers, running backs, and tight ends. But I think it does help when you have guys who can make plays, especially at this level. Now here he throws a difficult but catchable ball to Michael Pittman in the corner of the end zone, which he doesn't come up with. Now you want to set yourself apart, man. You got to make plays like that. Catching two feet in. And here we got a third down situation. You got uh, Mike Trashen over at the bottom of the screen running a good out route. Good route, good ball. Just don't catch it. And now it's fourth down. Now this one is actually from a surprising source. It's a broken play and an adjustment on the route by Alec Pierce, who I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but uh, he doesn't come up with this one again. Another good ball that he, it is catchable and he just don't come up with it. This here is a little quick pass to the tight end, Colin Granson. Um, they have to run plays like this because of the protection they're not getting, but he don't even come up with that. Good ball, right in the middle of the zone, and he don't come up with it. Now, Mike Pittman Jr. might be the most talented and promising uh, receiver on the team, but Alec Pierce, the rookie, is the one right now who's doing the most as far as making plays, making difficult plays, using his hands, his body, his leverage to get up on defenders and to make the difficult catches. Now, watch Alec Pierce here on the bottom of your screen. He's going to do a good stutter step at the line. And he gets a back shoulder fade, goes right up with the hands, comes down with the play. That's what they need. Now watch him at the top of the screen. 
This time he's going to run a curl route, and the defender actually has pretty decent coverage, but he just fights through with his hands and takes it away. Just took it. As a matter of fact, if we want to really be honest, he stole the interception because the DB was about to jump on it. But look, the hands are just too strong, and he had more desire to make the play than the other guy did. Excellent. Top of the screen again. He's going to run a comeback route on a poorly thrown ball. But again, that range he has, the hands, the aggressive hands, he goes and get it. Range is the word I forgot to use earlier. That's when receiver has a high catch radius. He can catch in more air around him than others. So now we come into the Matt Ryan portion of this video where I'm going to place some blame on him. And the first thing I notice is that he doesn't really want to push the ball down the field, whether it's from old age or lack of timing or, or trust in his line or trust in his weapons. Whatever it is, he just has no desire to push the ball down the field. And so they miss big plays. So at the top of your screen, you're going to see, I think it's the tight end Mo Alley Cox get open for a deep out. Now, I know what you're about to say, Matt Ryan's arm strength, well, he could make those throws in Atlanta. But like I said, as of right now, I don't know if he wants to do that. So he goes to a flat on the opposite side and it's incomplete. And even looking from this angle, you can see him looking in that direction, but he decides to pass it up to go through something a little easier down the front. Now, you might give Matt a little benefit of the doubt on that last play, but this one right here, I can't let go. So Kylan Granson again goes open for an out and up going up the sideline, but Matt misses him. He covered up in the skies perfectly. If you can see the second to the right over there, but uh, he comes with a free release. But I guess given that easy pass he dropped on that other clip, I guess Matt decided to pass him up and throw that little uh, swing pass to Pittman, which of course was incomplete. Now, this here was the longest pass of the season so far for Matt Ryan. And this one, the receiver had to even come back. So if you watch Alec turn around and go up for it, and that's pretty much it. So he did push it down the field, but it's just he couldn't do it with the same velocity as he could in his younger days. And you could even see that little step he tried to make right there. He looked old even doing that. So the first thing a lot of people want to do when they look at Matt's stats is look at them interceptions. And I want to say that there's context to them, like there is with any quarterback. But I want y'all to take a look at these picks and see if he thought he could have done something better to not have them be interceptions. I'm going to just let it play. and Y'all take a look at it for yourself. Okay, so this pick here, you got a legitimate beef, so I'll analyze this. Okay, so you got what looks like a good read where you have a one high and you have your middle man running a corner route. Should be a good ball. So here's the problem. All right, he takes too long, stares it down, and the ball comes off soft, so the safety is able to have time to break on it. Now that, for a veteran quarterback, that's just inexcusable. That's something you see a rookie do, but let's see, he stares it down, Goes right to it, lofts it up, gives plenty of time for the safety to come get it. All right, so this clip right here actually ended in inception, but I want to show you all a little bit of the chess match that uh, we do in football. So with this look, they have a bunch left, and they have a levels concept that comes out of it. And what Matt does is he sees the soft spot in the zone, and the linebacker sitting underneath, and he just throws it right there to that soft spot. Perfect ball, good catch, and they get a first down with it. So watch them try to do the same thing again, but with the regular trip side. Same thing. Same route concept, over the middle, tries to get over the backer, but this time he jumps on it and he gets the interception. So that's Matt being too greedy. This here was another stare down, and the slot was running either an out or a corner. It looked like a busted play, but the stare down allows the safety to come over and get the pick. So in this section, I've highlighted some plays that I think could work better for Ryan in the pass game. A lot of it is um, formations where guys are covered up, so bunch and other similar formations, uh, plays from the Shanahan era that work good, and quick passing game, especially given their protection issues. So in this formation, you see Mo Ali Cox is covered up by another tight end outside of him, and it frees him enough to get a free spot over the middle. 
This here is a Shanahan throwback. You got a play action jet sweep horizontally. You got a sale concept with a tight end or the corner route getting wide open in the zone. Big play. This here is another sale concept with a drag underneath the play action. Gets the drag wide open and makes another big play. And matter of fact, a touchdown. That's the kind of stuff Matt Ryan was used to on the Shanty and was highly successful with. And these last set of plays I'm showing are actually from the overtime in the Broncos game. But you see a lot of quick stuff here that is getting some traction. And it's the most offensive consistency they would had all game, maybe all season to that point. But I'm thinking this may be the future that the Colts can go if they want to get something out of Matt Ryan, especially given his age, the amount of time in his have. He doesn't have the weapons. He doesn't have... I think this is your best way to get some kind of consistency along with your running game whenever Jonathan Taylor get healthy again. So, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of things going on in Indianapolis, and it's not just about Matt Ryan sucking, okay? A lot of haters, they've had things to say about him over the years, but uh, with his um, abilities and limitations, it also has to go on to the team construction itself. What does the offensive line look like? What does the run game look like? What do the receivers look like? Is all that put in place? Is all that good for a winning program? Or a winning organization, rather? Uh, if it's not, then you're not going to have a winning product no matter who the quarterback is. So Matt does have limitations now due to age and, and years in the league. But also, uh, he doesn't have much to work with outside of Quentin Nelson and uh, – a receiver, a few receivers that I mentioned. So um, in closing, I just want to say that the problem with Matt Ryan and the problem with the Colts offense is a lot of different factors, and they all have to be considered. I appreciate you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe, and y'all have a good one.